North Central Region Coordinator for the Minor Use Animal Drug Program. That is a USDA program, actually, which isn't supported much by the USDA, by the way. Um, and I actually am paid by the state of Iowa just to teach. Okay, that's pretty much what I do. 80% of my uh, job is that. So this is just what I do for fun, uh, pretty much, nights and weekends. Um, so I am Duca. How many of you uh, use fenbendazole in pheasants? Okay, how many of you with your hands raised are in the U.S.? Okay, did you understand that pheasants, if you cannot mix pheasant feed with fenbendazole in it, it's against the law? Amduca uh, was put together, this is the Animal uh, Drug Act, basically, to, to short circuit that. And the, the first commandment is, thou shalt not mix feed with an extra label drug. And fenbendazole is extra label because it's not approved for use in pheasants. And what Bill has been doing uh, in this project started with our southern region coordinator many years ago. And Bill has been helping us uh, get this thing uh, going again. Uh, but uh, really, uh, and the other thing is that uh, currently you can mix it and call it turkey feed and feed it to pheasants, or chicken feed and call it to pheasants, but call it for, uh, for pheasants, use it for pheasants, but uh, you can't use the high level. Bill has been using the high level, but he's doing it only with permission of the uh, F, uh, FDA, and we work with him on that, so. Okay, so that's the Ten Commandments. Uh, this is the uh, other end of the uh, deal, uh, as long as we're talking about biblical things, the four horsemen of the ap uh, apocalypse, conquest or pestilence is what I really deal with, war, famine, and death. And this is what is required by the FDA for approval, okay? Uh, efficacy studies have already been accepted. I think Bill worked with that uh, years ago with our southern region coordinator, and our southern region coordinator uh, was not a veterinarian. I think he was just a chemist. And uh, he had trouble getting the projects uh, put together. Uh, I picked this up a little over a year ago now, and we've uh, actually completed the target animal safety study, the TAS. Uh, I'm going to skip the reproductive safety study at the moment. And um, the human food safety study is ready to go to the FDA practically, and then environmental assessment. And I'll talk about each of those little steps as we go. Okay, this is, I think I skipped a slide there. Uh, for those of you that don't know what gape worm is, uh, this is a bird that's affected by it. And that's the bird, uh, the worms down in the trachea. Um, I'm just going to skip through these a little bit here. Uh, we also uh, have an approval, uh, we're trying to get approval for this for um, Heterocus gallinae, or which is a cecal worm. Uh, that's not uh, as much of a problem in pheasants. Um, it does carry histomonas, uh, which has caused a blackhead. I've got some slides showing you blackhead, but I'm going to skip through those a little bit too. Okay. All right, uh, this is where we're at. Uh, efficacy of those four things that we Point out there, efficacy is done. FDA approved that study for years ago, and uh, we don't have to redo that as long as we get this other stuff done quickly. We got a message from the FDA to get our act together and get going on this. Uh, fortunately, our southern region coordinator retired, and then I took it over. Uh, and I'm a lot closer to Bell where a lot of the work was being done anyway. Uh, for this study, last summer we took 100 fe 160 pheasant chicks. Depends of five birds each. Uh, we had to feed four, three different levels. Uh, the 100 parts per million is what we're trying to get, which is the high level, a treatment dose level for use in pheasants. And then we had to go three times that and five times that for 21 days, which is three times the normal length. So we had to try and poison those birds. Okay, that's what the FDA wanted. We had to do daily health checks. We measured the feed consumption. Uh, we went through the necropsy on all these birds, you know, histopath, we cut them into little sections and do serum chemistry and complete blood counts. It's as though these guys were humans. The FDA does not distinguish between animal studies and human studies. So we had to do everything that a human drug company would do to get approval. These are the tissues we had to examine, and every bird had to just, you know, they had to go through it with a fine tooth comb and find all these little oh, tissues. If you've tried to find the pituitary body on a six week old pheasant, uh, that's not easy. It's about the size of a grain of, well, some of them are about the size of a grain of sand, okay? 
uh, histology, all those tissues were collected, put in formalin, and then they had to section those and then look at them. I wonder if we had to have an, a pathologist look at those. Uh, fortunately, we only had to do two groups, the control uh, birds, which didn't receive any, and then the high-dose birds. Okay, the chemistry, we had to go through all the serum chemistries. You don't have to read these, but everything that you would do with a human study, again, uh, we had to do for a veterinary study, birds. Uh, complete blood counts, just the blood work alone on each of these birds cost about $40. Okay, so they're not a cheap study. So the results of that, the, we didn't find anything wrong with these birds. Even at the high dose for three times the uh, uh, length of time you would normally treat, uh, we didn't find any adverse effects in those birds at all. Okay. Uh, we had to do look at feathering, we had to look at everything with those birds, uh, but there was nothing that we could see. That study report is in my file cabinet at the moment. Uh, we're, as soon as I go back, I've got to give an exam to my vet students, and then after that I'm going to work on that study report. So we'll get that in fairly quickly. Uh, the reproductive safety issue is, I don't know, they always curse me, because every, every time I do a study, they tag on reproductive safety. And we've been threatened with this already, Bill. And uh, uh, Bill has provided data for the past three years, hatching and fertility data, um, and the FDA might accept that. That's a might. If they don't accept that, we'll have to go in and do a specific study looking at hatchability and fertility in pheasants. Uh, one of the problems was that there was a, a kind of a goofy paper, and I apologize if the author is in this room, um, but they used 1,600 parts per million in some breeder turkeys, males, and it knocked their, for their, their semen count and their fertility went through the floorboard, okay? And the FDA looked at that and said, well, this causes reproductive problems in males. And whenever th anything like that happens, then we have to certify that's not going to happen in pheasants. Okay, so I'm not sure what we're going to do with this one yet, and we may beg for the mercy from the FDA. Human food safety study is really close to going into the FDA. I uh, uh, got 32, well, actually 42 pe pheasants last summer from Bill, um, and then we fed those 100 parts per million for seven days, which is the, what we were, our target was. Euthanized those, collected the breast muscle, the leg muscle, and the livers, uh, shipped those overnight to the, uh, my companion uh, person over at the UC Davis. Uh, there are four regions, one's at UC Davis, one's at Florida, one's at Cornell, and one's at Iowa State. Um, and I worked very closely with the uh, uh, lab at UC Davis. They're the analytical lab. Um, we, the assay results, fenbendazole sulfone, which is the target residue, uh, they were detected at all time points in the, in the tissues that were assayed, but by six hours, the residues were below the, the turkey liver and muscle tolerances. If the FDA agrees, that should give us a zero day withdrawal for 100 parts per million for fenbendazole. Um, and as I said, that report is even closer to going into the FDA. That could go in in a few weeks. So what's ahead? The fourth horseman of the apocalypse is the <coughs> environmental assessment. Uh, that's probably just a paper argument, uh, and the FDA people will write that for us, and we won't have to worry because that, they just don't have to worry about it because it's so widely used in chickens and turkeys anyway. Um, the FDA CVM has uh, Office of New Animal Drug Evaluation, or ONAID, has six months to review each study report that we put in there. So if I got those in today, Six months from now, I would hear back from the FDA whether they were acceptable or not, or whether we had to do additional data, or they would want some clarification. If they're accepted and they take the reproductive safety and everything, it possibly could be that fenbendazole may be approved by 2013. That's optimistic because the FDA has to get their work done, they have to accept everything, and then the drug company has to put it on their label. If the drug company is slow to do that, then it takes more time. So we're at least on track. This is looking a lot better than it did a couple of years ago. Um, and we talked with Bill about uh, fenbendazole approval for charcoters. Uh, plans are kind of on hold at the moment. Two things happened. Uh, the facilities at ISU got booked for chicken work for the full summer. And it's kind of hard to get pheasants in December. 
around here. Uh, so uh, and those weren't going to open up until late October, November. Uh, so that was one thing. Uh, and the existence of the minor drug program that's paying for this, uh, that program was deleted from the president's budget. The, F the USDA did not even turn it in this year, Bill. Um, and we, uh, on the last farm bill, we put a, extended a lot, of, expended a lot of effort to try and get into the farm bill, and Bill helped out with that. But then it was dropped when it went commit to committee, so we didn't get anywhere there. Uh, right now, it, the pro, the whole program is on life support basically, and it may lose that at some point. But um, this is the only program that works for small producers of minor species. Um, in the U.S. So if we don't do it, then you've got to rely on Pfizer or Shearing Plow or Muriel to get approval for pheasants for their drugs, and that's not likely to happen. 